Hi everyone, welcome back to Calico Critter World. Today we're going to be making the bedding. So here's the the bed that we made in that other video. Got the mattress glued on and I'm doing, as you saw in one of the videos, I'm doing these little faux fur end of the edge of the bed blankets. So I'm going to show you how I do these. To keep it from fraying so the so it doesn't um, come undone on the edges so I have this piece of faux fur it's called pop faux fur sheet and I got this at Joann's fabrics I like the way this particular faux fur feels it's super duper uber soft And I like the way that it laid across the bed too. It seemed to stay on. Sometimes when you make bedding for tiny beds, it they it sticks out, but this tends to lay really nice. Way it's heavy, so um, we're gonna cut. We've got four rooms in our hotel, so we need to cut a few more. This is gonna be my template, of course, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trace this on here. should probably do it this side up. So we have to do doesn't seem like that pen's working very well. well let's use a silver sharpie. Then you want to take some liquid stitch because what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, another piece of fabric and we're going to glue it onto the back of this. So let's pre-cut out that piece of fabric as well. This will keep it from the ends fraying. Looks like we need to take a little bit more off of that and it's probably better to do it now than do it when it's glued down. And then just go ahead and take your liquid stitch. And I go ahead Got some dried on the tip there. I'll go ahead and just go ahead and put it right on here on the edges. That's really where you want to keep it from fraying is the edges and I kind of spread it around with the tip. You can also use a brush if you'd like. Put, put, them, put some, draw some into the middle but the perimeter is mostly where you want it because that's where the fur will come off. And then it just gives you a, a nice finished edge there. And then you just place your fabric right on there and press down.
and let that dry for about 30 minutes. And you can go ahead and trim some of the edges off or pick some of it off so that it doesn't there might be a little stray and there you go now it will shed a little bit so expect that and if you have too much shedding you can try to put a bead of this in closer a little bit to the edge here and just let that dry that'll help it all right and you have a no sew little end of edge of bed blanket there nice touch all right so i'm going to do a few more of these well, this has proven to be very messy. <laughs> I have fur like everywhere, but there you go. So I have four of these now, one for each room. One looks like it's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. I can always cut the edge off if I want to. I can always make it a little bit smaller. And there we go. Um, you can also use this fur to make um, little shawls for your calico critters for wintertime dioramas. It's very good for that. So I have quite a bit left here. But um, so that part is done. So now we're going to move on to the bed. These are the little pillows that came with the sofa. And um, I think these are perfect for the calico critters to like sleep on, like for their sleep on pillows. Um, but I also want some decorative sizes, so I may make them a little bit larger, but that's kind of the size that we're looking at here, just so you have an idea of the size. We're looking at about one and a quarter inches. by one and three quarters inches so and in centimeters you're talking about five centimeters by about three and a half centimeters So this is some of the fabric that I chose and I'm not quite sure. This is the first one, this purple one. I definitely want to incorporate this, but I also might want to incorporate some of this um, wine color because um, I thought it was also really super beautiful. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet or where I'm going to put what, but I do want to start by making um, a few pillows like this size and see how it goes so the first thing we have to do is make a pattern for them just using a regular piece of paper and deciding how big we want the pillows to be i think i'm going to want them to be a little bit bigger than these and then we're going to have to also do a seam allowance as well so i'll go up here I think that should be good. Then we're going to cut this out and use this as our template. I want to put a few pins in it to hold it. I went ahead and doubled up the fabric so that I'm cutting both sides. I also folded it over so there'll be one side that I don't even have to sew. Now if you can't, if you don't have a sewing machine, um, you can always sew these by hand or if you're younger and you have your grandmother or mother sew them for you, I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out.
You always want to turn the fabric inside out. So the side that you want to, to be on the outside, turn inward. So you're going to sew your seam and you're going to leave just a little bit of room so you can stuff it. So now we're going to take it and we're going to turn it inside out. I left quite a bit of room to stuff it. You can stuff it with cotton balls or you can stuff it with other pillow stuffing that you might have around the house. If you have a pillow that you don't use, you can use that. Take a small pair of shears and poke out the edges. I had an extra pillow lying around the house so I could take some of this batting out. I think it's the best. All done. And that's our pillow. Not bad. I really, really like the color and I think it's perfect for the bed. We're going to make the comforter the same way as we did with the pillow. We're going to take a piece of paper, place it over the bed. We're going to allow a seam allowance where you're going to be stitching an extra little part there. So I'm, I'm going to be allowing that much and take it all the way around the bed. And then leave some at the end and a seam allowance. So this is going to be my pattern for the comforter. I think I'm going to do a lightweight one. I, I may make it heavier by doubling up the fabric if it doesn't lay correctly, but I think the satin is so silky, the satin is so silky that it's going to lay very smoothly over the bed. So I'm just going to take my pins and I'm going to pin this to the fabric just like I did before. and and then sew it up just like I did the pillow. So I've cut two pieces. I've decided to do the underside in the white, in the top, in the silk. That way when you fold it over, you'll see the top of the bed. It'll be white. I think it'll be a nice contrast. So I'm gonna do this just like I did the pillow. I'm gonna do the sides that I want facing out, facing in. Just as I suspected, the comforter is not going to go to the shape of the bed. So what I could do is I could glue it down with some tacky glue or something to keep it down so that it looks more real <laughs> when it's on the bed. I decided to use some of these stick pins to hold it down because the bed is made out of foam board it's easy to put these pins in and they'll hold they can be positioned underneath so they can hold the comforter down. There, that looks much better. And I folded the top down to make it look like the top sheet. And then this pillow can go on top and then we'll do another pillow and then we'll do a third center pillow. So here is the finished bed. I it came out really, really good. I like the two pillows and I think the one white one is a nice complement to the white sheet underneath and then I tacked the comforter around the bed and I think it's so cute so I'm so excited it looks very hotelish 
and I'm really happy with it and I just love this purple this purple is so yummy it's such a great color so I'm, I've got the rest of it cut out and then I'll finish doing the other beds thank you so much for watching as always click subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos click like if you like the content and we'll catch you next time bye for now